Good morning, welcome back to the studio. In this video, I'm going to talk you through the process of building a cloth covered button for late 18th century men's suits. My name's Kelly Grant. I am chief cook and bottle washer, head tailor and dressmaker at Sweet Shoe Historical Clothing. And it is a bright and sunny day here in Carlton Corner. All right, so here is how I go about making my cloth covered buttons. Now, you can tell the difference between the right and the wrong side because the right side has a nap. So that's the wrong side of the fabric. There's my button mold, and here is my process. Now, I could very easily cut the circle and gather around and do the buttonhole with just the fabric. Um, some fabrics re require a little bit more stability though. And um, when you're pulling as hard as you are on the fabric to make your covered buttons, it's always a good idea to stabilize your fabric. And in period, they would have glued a bit of lesser fabric to the back of the fashion fabric that they're cutting the button from. Uh, I tend to use a bit of iron-on interfacing because it works the same way and I get a nice even appearance to the outside because the glue is an even layer. Now you can feel the beads of the iron-on glue that goes to the wrong side of the fashion fabric. I also tend to iron the interfacing down so that it doesn't stick to the bottom of my iron. I'm going to move my plastic bits and my wax out of the way. Now, the trick with iron-on interfacing is you can't just press it down and expect it to hold. It's a process, and you're going to steam it and press. And when you think you've pressed enough, press some more. And my iron is making full contact with the fabric and the board. And I'm putting a bit of weight behind it too. There, now that should be nice and well adhered. Yeah, I can tell from the way that it looks. You can't see any of the beads through anymore. You can't feel them. All right, so you need to make a circle that is as big as your button mold plus half again. And you want that half again to be able to meet the center when you draw up your gathering stitch.
Now, here's a pro tip. I'm going to cut two. And I'm cutting two so that I can use one as a sample and one as a pattern. If the sample works, then that's a good pattern. If the sample needs to be trimmed back, I can trim back the pattern as well and use that to cut the rest of my circles. If it's too small, I haven't wasted some very expensive cloth. And yeah, I'm using the scraps, but um, it's still expensive cloth and I don't want to be wasting it. Now, in a perfect world, you would use the same color thread as your fashion fabric. But I'm using my beige thread so you can see it. And I'm using a buttonhole twist. It's a nice strong thread. You're going to be pulling this. making a good knot and leaving a bit of a tail. Around the outside edge, I'm going to do a running stitch and I'm going through both layers quite evenly. This iron-on interfacing method also works if you're working with a twill fabric because the twill will unweave itself and it gives you a nice cut edge, more stability. Or if you need to build up, bulk up your fabric, it'll help that too. You could add more la layers than just the one. There we are back at the beginning. I'm going to take my thumbnail and put my tail down in the button. I'm going to then put the domed side of the button down because I want the domed side up when the button is done. And I'm putting the button mold in the center and drawing those gathering stitches up. Now, here's where things get fussy. You're going to go inside on the opposite side, past your stitching, and come up. And then you're going to go across, and inside, past your stitching, and come up. And pulling tightly. And you're going to go around the entire button, pulling up all of those humps. And now I've gotten all the way around. And that's nice and solid. And I'm going to go in the middle. 
and make a knot or five to secure those threads. And at this point, I would also work a little bar tack going across so that I could stitch that button onto the garment. And then that's a beautiful little button. It's going to be solid and wear like iron for the duration of the coat's existence. And now I also know that this circle works and I can cut the rest of my buttons out. I'm just going to work my bar tack. And if you can imagine all of those threads done in black, you're not going to see them once it's done. There's my little buttonhole stitches over my bar tack. And then that'll hold the button on nicely. So there's my finished button. All nice and tidy on the back side with a nice little shank to be able to sew it onto the suit. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the dingly bell to find out when the next video goes live. Thanks! Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah.